Have you ever wondered how flexible wings in Formula One work and why they are so important? This is a question that has sparked endless conversations in the paddock, as teams tirelessly pursue the most efficient solutions for these unique components. The technical regulations of Formula One are quite specific, stating that no mobile elements are allowed on the cars, with the sole exception of the DRS. Yet, teams continually seek regulatory loopholes to gain performance advantages, creating a high-stakes game of innovation and interpretation. This has led to the emergence of various teams showcasing a particular flex, especially at the front of their cars, allowing them to fly under certain conditions. However, the FIA is keen on maintaining a level playing field, which led to the introduction of TD-018 in late 2023, a new regulation aimed at curtailing the flexing of wing surfaces. As we move forward, let's delve into how these wings move on the track. So how exactly do these wings move while on the track? Well, let's dive into the construction of F1 wings. The upper flaps are practically cut in two by a metal blade up to the outermost bracket. These flaps are free to move for any angle corrections, a section that has been identified by the FIA for excessive movement during driving. Now, imagine the car speeding on the track. As the speed increases, the aerodynamic load on these components becomes increasingly significant, pushing them downward in a vertical movement, causing a lowering effect. This results in considerable performance advantages. Think about it. By reducing the frontal area that the air must pass through, cars gain a lot in aerodynamic efficiency and reduce their drag. Once the speed decreases, the aerodynamic load also decreases, returning the displacement to zero. As the car slows down, the aerodynamic load collapses, returning the displacement to zero. Now, you might be wondering, how do teams make these wings flexible? The answer lies in the endless research dedicated to the selection of materials and their structural design. You see, these wings are composed of a composite material, specifically carbon. This material undergoes rigorous testing to evaluate its rigidity and potential for flexion or bending. The process doesn't stop there. Technicians armed with finite element method or FEM simulations delve into the intricate details of these wings. They identify the areas under the greatest stress, the parts that bear the brunt of the aerodynamic forces at play. But they don't do this alone. Aerodynamic experts join the mix, working collaboratively to decide which areas to make softer. This softening allows the flaps to lower under load, a vital component in achieving that desirable flex. A successful choice leads to the final determination of the number of layers and their arrangement to create the flaps. So, to summarize everything we've learned today, the concept of flexible wings has been a hot topic in the Formula One paddock. These wings move under the aerodynamic load, with their vertical movement occurring as the speed increases. This movement results in a lowering effect, reducing the frontal area that the air must pass through, and thereby reducing drag. Teams make these wings flexible through endless research, primarily involving the choice of materials and their structure. The flaps are made of composite material, specifically carbon, and undergo various tests to verify their rigidity and possible flexion. The importance of flexible wings in Formula One cannot be overstated, as they offer considerable performance advantages. By reducing their impact with the incident air, cars gain a lot in aerodynamic efficiency. This is why teams are constantly seeking maximum efficiency from these wings. With the constant evolution in Formula One, flexible wings remain one of the most intriguing aspects of the sport. Who knows what the future holds for this fascinating piece of engineering?